comes Mickey Duncan making his way to the ring. Duncan, who's from Newcastle, and guess who he's managed by? The man sitting next to me, uh, Glenn McCrory. So you can do the rundown on him, Glenn. Save me the job. <laughs> uh, thanks very much. Well, he's certainly come here to fight. He's in good shape. He's coming off a, a couple of losses abroad. Before that, he had some of the best wins of his career out in Germany. Um, but he's in good shape, and he's coming to fight. But he does start an underdog, there's no doubt about it here, uh, Mickey Duncan, with a record of 10 wins, 15 defeats and one draw. But uh, as Glenn says, he's taken a lot of those fights at short notice. Mickey Duff, the unmistakable figure of <laughs> leading out Gary Logan. There he is in that rather snazzy blue and white striped kind of Sheffield Wednesday West Bromwich Albion style kit. He is in fact from Brixton. Logan, who's only lost one of 20 contests to date. Actually, I think he's wearing a black and white strip. I think that's for Newcastle. Yeah, colours deceive me, I must say, in the <laughs> fading light. Either that or the eyesight's going. Referee will be Reg Thompson. Introductions from Mike Goodall. Ladies and gentlemen from the Lewisham Theatre, good evening and welcome to World Championship Boxing. Your officials this evening are all appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control. The first contest is a welterweight contest of eight three-minute rounds between and introducing in the red corner wearing the black trunks from Newcastle. Would you please welcome Mickey Duncan. His opponent in the blue corner wearing the black and white stripe trunks from Croydon, Gary Logan. At the weigh-in today, Duncan scaled 10 stone 10 pounds, Logan 10 stone 8 and a half pounds. Your officials for this contest, the timekeeper, Mr. Tom Rice, the referee, Mr. Reg Thompson. So Gary Logan in the striped shorts there on the left of your picture, returning having had a year's break from boxing and the problem was that he had ruptured a stomach muscle so uh, this is a kind of a rehabilitation fight for him Mickey Duncan on the right of your picture there the Newcastle lad looking to claim a notable scalp interesting little eight rounder at welterweight our preamble to the world title fight with Duke McKenzie and Jesse Benavides to follow live right after this well these are the, the sort of fights that Mickey's got to take Unfortunately, he's got to step in with, uh, with the big boys if he's going to get a chance at bigger things. be interesting to see whether there are any uh, signs of ring rust for Logan. He's a decent puncher and regarded as a, a useful prospect without ever being over-convincing in his career to date, Logan. Well, he's got quite a good record, but I... From what I've heard, he's never really impressed as of yet. But he's getting his jab working nice at the beginning. Yeah, Logan was in fact uh, floored by Trevor Ambrose in one of the uh, last fights before his enforced layoff and was made to look fairly bad that night. But he started quite sharply here, scoring with some useful looking left jabs and hooks in the opening minute or so yes he's boxing nice he's moving around using the left jab that's the sort of fight that Duncan has to do he has to get in and and rough Logan up that's what he's been told to do Logan looks to have a good stiff left jab it's been quite busy in this opening round with it so far. Mickey Duncan has been quite ambitiously matched. They put him in with Lloyd Hunnigan, the former World Welterweight Champion. Uh, he was stopped in two rounds. Some thought the stoppage a little premature on that night. And he was also in with the good quality German Rainer Geis, uh, who flattened him in seven rounds. Although up to that point in the contest, Duncan had acquitted himself quite well. Yeah, he was actually winning the fight, doing very well indeed against uh, the former Olympic bronze medalist, but then ran in with his hands down. He does lose concentration at times. 
Wicks. But when he's in full flow, he's a, he's a handful, as he proved against Lee Wicks. At the minute, he's just given Logan a little bit too much room to use that jab. He needs to close the distance down and get a little bit busier. Just rough him up a little bit, try and get him out of his stride. At the moment in this round, Logan landing most of the sharper punches, though Duncan did get through with one notable right just now there. <laughs> yes, Logan's the loose and he's, he's having a bit of success with them wide hooks. He has got quite a good left hook, I've been told. End of the first round. There's Mickey Duncan. Ten wins, none by knockout. In fact, I don't think he's ever had anybody on the floor, has he even? He hasn't. He's not a, he's not a big puncher. He, he wins his fights by lots of hard work. And 15 defeats and the draw. Doesn't look too good, and it probably doesn't do him too many favours, uh, that record, but he has taken an awful lot of fights almost uh, at a day's notice. Gary Logan there, 19 wins and one defeat. Nine wins inside schedule, which suggests he's a useful puncher, if not uh, absolutely terrifying. Yes, he's supposed to have quite a, a crisp left hook. That's the shot that Duncan's got to try and keep away from. Yes, And I think, I'm, round two. I think I'm best to leave the point scoring to you, yeah. Ian, because I'm slightly the biased. Glenn's neutrality <laughs> is being tested to the full here. He'd rather be in the corner screaming, I was, I was thinking, Mickey Duncan's ear. But uh, he did all right in that first round, I thought. He controlled he himself well, Glenn. He did. He come on strong at the end of the round. And that's what he's got to do. He can be a very tough fighter, Mickey, and he's really he's got to put the pressure on and keep the pressure on. He did it great up in Scotland with one of Terry Lawless's fighters, Lee Wicks, when he just kept constant pressure on and, and won a very good decision on points. Yes, that was an upset win that uh, Duncan scored. Blake, uh, sorry, Gary Logan's only defeat was against Chris Blake. Close one on points over eight rounds, but that was back in November 1989, so he's unbeaten since then. Let him up, let him up. At the moment, I would like to see Miggy be a little bit more aggressive and force the fight a little bit more. He's just given Logan a little bit too much room. Good body shot there from Duncan with the right hand. Very game, very willing. But it would be... There's no doubt about it, an upset of the uh, script if he was to be upset here, Gary Logan. Well, that's always going to be the problem with Mickey because you know, we've had to take fights at short notice. We've had to travel the length of breath of the country to get him fights. Um, you know, so he, he's always had to take the, the hard fights. And he's always going to have to until he can pull off a really big upset. So you know, that's why he's here tonight. Hopefully he can... He can do it, but he needs to do a little bit more work. Logan's doing the sharper work again in this round. Duncan trying to rough him up there on the way in. Elbows flying a bit nice as well. Nice from Duncan. Let him up, let him up. Trying to tee that, that left hook off of the jab, Logan. Quite a good punch. That's what Miggy's got to do. He's got to try and keep him off balance, keep throwing shots. They're not the, the hardest shots in the world, but they, they will upset Logan's timing. That's a big problem for him, of course, isn't it? There's lack of a really concussive kind of punch. That's right.
Welcome back to the uh, Lewisham <laughs> Theatre. You're looking at the face of Gary Logan in an eight-round welterweight contest, which is uh, the hors d'oeuvre, as it were, to the world title fight to follow here between Duke McKenzie and Jesse Benavides. The world super phantomweight title will be on the line live on Sky Sports in just a few minutes from now. Mickey Duncan in the uh, black shorts there on the right of your picture. So far, Logan's Stop. jab and his occasional left hook have been the most dominant factors in the fight. Now, referee Reg Thompson has just uh, stopped the action because the boot laces of Logan have just come loose. Somebody at ringside shouting out, you're the boss, Logan, you're the boss. The Minotaur has just given Logan a little bit too much room to try and dictate behind you know, to do what he wants. The way that Duncan fights, he's, he's got to upset him, he's got to push him off balance, he's got to you know, be a bit aggressive and a bit rough. from Logan but it seemed to catch the gloves of Duncan yeah he tried the, the right right of a cut just to take Duncan here and catch him on the left too it didn't quite work Duncan has been stopped seven times in his career and I suppose Logan might be quite disappointed if he doesn't make it eight don't talk like that Ian please <laughs> Good right hand from Duncan. But they're nice jabs. He's, he's nice and loose, Logan. He's got a nice loose style. With him, though, what we're trying to assess is whether he has the ability to become anything more than a useful prospect, whether he is a potential British Championship type of fighter. You'll need, I think, a couple of fights to get back into the swing a bit after that break. Yes, it's quite a long layoff, 12 months. That's why we took the fight. <laughs> no, not a bad ploy. It would be a good name to get on the world's record. Good sharp punching from Logan there. Yes, he's getting some nice shots in there. Logan again has just given him that little bit too much room. Bell coming up to the end of third round. Duncan still willing, but the sharper work for my money still being done by Gary Logan here. <laughs> Welcome back. Gary Logan, who seems to be in control of the fight without ripping up any trees so far. Action from that last round. Ten seconds. Duncan with a decent jab there. Signal. Round four. Fourth round, Gary Logan in these striped shorts. This is the, the stage in the fight where Duncan's really got to try and pick it up a little bit. Logan's been out of the ring for a while. So Duncan's got to try and make him, make him pay any rustiness. He's got to make it sure. And he's got to put the pressure on. At the moment, he's allowing Logan to do pretty much what he wants to get his jam off. Just giving him that, that little bit too much time. He's got to rough him up a bit more. I think that's what he's trying to do. Yeah, that's what he's trying to do. He's almost as if he was hearing you then, Glenn. Yes. You haven't installed some kind of earpiece, <laughs> have you? <laughs> One of those punches from Logan seemed to stray a bit on the low side there. Logan's having a, a better round this round. He's just getting through a few more shots. He's getting a bit closer to him. Well, that's when he fights better, when he's 
you know, when he's more aggressive, when he's up close. I suppose that must be the tactics from Duncan's point of view to keep up a very good pace and make Logan pay for any stamina limitations he may have after that break. That's right, and that's what he's got to try and do. He can't give him room. And also, on a, as a point thing, because Duncan lacks the, the punch, he's really got to work twice as hard. Logan got through a couple of nice shots there. Nice left hook and right hand. As we've said, Duncan has had uh, his upset wins before. He beat Lee Wicks and uh, went to Berlin as well and had a good win over the Russian Oleg Sharlajev. That was a points win. Yes, he boxed very well in Germany to, to win that night. Then we, we took the Hunnigan fight, hoping that, you know, that would be the, the big scalp to get. But Lloyd still had a bit too much. Nice right hand from Duncan. I think Logan's coming back with some nice, good, loose shots. He's working well to the body. Sorry, Glenn, I interrupted you. I was just about to say the problem for Duncan is when he does land with good shots, of course, the punches just tend to bounce off the other guy's chin a little bit. That's right. Well, he just lacks that, you know, that strong punch that, that could make such a difference. He does some good work at times, but that shot would make such a difference to his repertoire. So he's got to do twice as much work. It's one thing you can't really give a fighter as well. You can't give him punch power. He's either got it or he hasn't. It's, I think it, it can be developed, but you're right, it's, it's a way a fighter sits on his feet. There's the face of Mickey Duncan. How do you think he's doing? You're his manager, Glenn. He's doing okay. I think it's, I think Logan's ahead, but Mickey just needs to do a little bit more work. You know, Logan's landed with shots like that where he's got, you know, the cleaner shots. But he's still there, he's still working well, he just needs to pick it up. This hopefully is the, the stage in the fight where it would maybe start telling on Logan a bit his inactivity. Whether that's wishful thinking on Glenn's part, we'll, well see in a moment. Well, it certainly is. He's starting to open up a little bit, Logan. Some nice shots. If anything, Logan is just starting to pick up the pace at the start of this round. Much more urgency about him. Firing in a few more of those jabs and starting to let the heavier stuff go too. Duncan had his best round in the fourth. Well, Mickey's the sort of fighter who, who often, as he gets into a fight, starts enjoying it more and you know, brings his best work. It's when he, he takes his time and, and stands around that he gets caught with, you know, with other fighters' big shots. So really, he's just got to keep busy. So if Logan ups his temper, that might help Duncan a bit. Good right hand. Duncan just looking a little more swollen around the face. Has had to eat quite a few of Logan's jabs. And this is a much, much bigger round for Logan so far. Yeah, he's getting some good shots off Logan. He's just standing in the middle of the ring, using that jab. And a, a difficult time too for Duncan, really. I suppose he was just starting to feel in that fourth round as if he was making some inroads. And Logan, I think, maybe sensed that, came mm. out in the fifth really strong. Yes, he came out. Now he's been, he's been a bit coy. He's trying to, to use his skill. He's standing in the middle of the ring and just trying to, to put Duncan up and come out with good counters. Got to give some credit, though, to your fighter, Glenn. He's so game, isn't he? Well, he's very game, very tough. He'll give it everything he's got. Fighters like Mickey Duncan, uh, in some ways, the 
lifeblood of the game. He uh, has no job outside boxing. He depends on fighting to earn his living. And I know you were telling me beforehand he'd fight every week if he if he could. That's right. A lot of the fighters from the northeast have to go the same way. You know, we haven't got the big promotions, the big television shows. So they've got to go on the road. They've got to be tough, and they've got to be prepared to step in the opponent's backyard. And Mickey's, you know, the perfect example. He'll go anywhere and fight anybody. Comes aloft to the crowd as if to say, "I'm in charge of this contest." And uh, at this point, I must say, it's hard to argue, though. Glenn might. <laughs> I'd like to, but yes, he is in charge. He's getting away with a better boxing and picking Duncan up. Duncan's got to up the pace. He's got to throw a lot more shots. A nice left hook there to the head and then doubled up the body. It looked like it hurt Duncan a little bit. He pulled his elbows down. Look at these sweat dripping off the two fighters there. Mickey Duncan from Newcastle. No doubt wishing he had a record as perfect as the football team from those parts have just at the moment. Has been a bit of a revival, I must say, in northeast boxing, though, in recent years, of which, of course, Glenn himself has been a part. Sixth round. Logan in the striped shorts. Good right hand there. Crash through the middle of the guard of Duncan. He's got a, Logan's got a very slow, lazy sort of style, but it's quite effective and it's managing to, you know, rock Duncan's head back quite a bit. If you're tuning in, hoping to see uh, Duke McKenzie's bid to become a world champion at a third weight. Let me tell you, it will follow directly after this fight, live from the Lewisham Theatre here. Logan's concentrating on the body. He's trying to get that left hook behind the elbow of Duncan. Logan, no question about it, is building up a very big points advantage here. Yes, he's in, he's in charge and he's getting through with the, the better work. Really, we need a, a big round from Dunga to, to try and swear things. Logan has had uh, quite a few early stoppages, four in the first round, but his career hasn't quite taken off as yet. He's done, he's doing very well, Logan, to do the, you know, he's had a 12-month layoff, and yet he's looking good. Yes, he hasn't looked ring rusty, has he? He hasn't. He's been very relaxed, you know, a loose style, which has been effective. He's just holding on a little bit there to Duncan. So maybe he's getting the feel the, the pace a little bit. Wasn't a bad amateur either, Logan, a London ABA champion. Though he was uh, knocked out in the first round by Mark McCreeth in the ABA semi-finals uh, in 1988. <laughs> Last few seconds of the round, and Logan is boss. This is new Color Magic Car Polish from Turtle Wax. It's color enriched to blend with your car's color. Watch. When you polish, minor scratches disappear like magic. Just pick the color closest to your... Welcome back to the Lewisham Theatre. The face of Mickey Duncan, who, quite honestly, needs a knockout to win here now in this uh, welterweight contest. 
up against Gary Logan, who has been in firm control behind his left jab in his comeback fight after an injury-enforced year-long layoff. Yes, Logan's controlled the fight. He's got a very loose, relaxed style. He's managed to, to pick Duncan up and, and get through with the shots that he's wanted to. Duncan has never really got into gear. He just see, you know, I just feel as if he needs to lift up his pace altogether. But then, as we see there, every time Duncan tries to, Logan comes back with a nice shot. It's of course the ten and a half stone weight division where Britain have had some uh, good men in recent years, like uh, Lloyd Hunnigan, of course, who was world champion. Colin Jones, Kirkland Lang, Gary Jacobs. Is Logan, or does he have, do you think, the potential, Glenn, to rise into championship class? I'm not sure. He's, he's a good boxer, good skills, um, nice jab, a very nice relaxed style. But really, I think the thing that he's lacking is that bit of urgency, which, to be honest, to get into world class, he's going to need. He's all a little bit too laid back. Of course, the other thing you really have to have as a fighter is the ability to sell tickets, the charisma, and the kind of dynamism almost, don't you? I'm not quite sure whether Logan has those qualities, not on this evidence, anyway. No. To do that, you need that little bit something extra, and he hasn't showed that. He showed himself to be a good, solid performer. Yeah, he's got a lot of talent, all right. And uh, he's been, to be perfectly honest, and no disrespect to Glenn's fighter, he's been, uh, he's been a runaway winner of this. Unless, of course, Mickey Duncan can come up with something in the last, uh, what is it, four minutes or so we've got left. And now Bridge Thompson's taken him into the corner. He has, the face is getting marked up, isn't it? Just There's a the left there. eye. That's quite a nasty one, isn't it? And it is quite one-sided, too. Bridge Thompson's going to let it go on. To be fair to Duncan, he is still throwing out lots of leather. but it hasn't been to an awful lot of effect. No, he's tried throughout. He's just, you know, lacked the skills of Logan. <laughs> Wouldn't say, though, at any stage that Logan has had Duncan in any kind of serious trouble. He hasn't. He's just done that, that little bit of the cleaner work. You know, nice shots like that. That's, that's all that separated them. Logan's done through better shots throughout. Three minutes to go for Gary Logan to make it 20 wins on his record against that uh, one close points defeat against Chris Blake. He will have felt coming out here tonight that... Uh, he needs to resuscitate his career. Now, they're having to work on that uh, cut left eye now of Mickey Duncan. Has he cut before like that? He's had a little bit of cuts. He's never had anything serious. It doesn't look too bad. It looks like they've got a, got a hold of it. It's a bit swollen around the face as well. He's had that jab pumping into it just about uh, the whole night long. So that he... Eighth and last round here. And don't go away, Duke McKenzie coming up, bidding to become a world champion again against Jesse Benavides live here on Sky Sports. Gary Logan, striped shorts, Mickey Duncan in the black from Newcastle. Logan, mile ahead on points. Yes, it's been a good performance by Logan. He's, he's done some nice boxing, he's used that jab well, used his skills. Come on. 
No, he's still coming forward. He still wants to have a fight, Mickey Duncan. Yes, well, he's a very game fighter. He always gives a good account of himself. And he's looking a bit of a mess around that face now, Mickey Duncan. Yes, he's marked up a bit now. It's just now that you wish that, you know, Mickey had a punch. Yeah, his career would be an entirely different story, I'm sure, if he did have some punch power. I seem to remember early career Lloyd Hunnigan being more of the fancy Dan kind of fighter, and then suddenly he yes, seemed to he, sort of evolve punch power, didn't he? That's right. He, he also evolved that, that urgency that I think Logan's going to have to to get if he wants to step up in class. Logan starting to get through here with some heavier shots. Duncan going into his imitation of the Harley shuffle almost <laughs> there to try and show that he still had plenty left but he is looking pretty tired now and uh, why not at the end of eight hard rounds Logan has lasted the pace well in his uh, rehabilitation fight Throughout the fight, Logan's been quite accurate. He hasn't thrown a, a great deal of shots, but he's been very accurate when he has. Thrown nice body shots, some nice hooks to the head. And that was a good body punch too. Two good body punches from Logan. Basically, the story here is that he's been uh, just a couple of leagues too high for Duncan. Bell goes to end it, Duncan almost wrestling his way to the front of the queue, hoping to have his hand raised, but really there was never any question that he would. Gary Logan wins the fight, from this observer anyway, and sorry to say it, Glenn, pretty comfortably really. Yes, I agree with you, he did. Mickey never got the urgency, never stepped up, and Logan landed with the, the better shots, the cleaner shots, and a good repertoire. So it was, it was a nice win for him. So it'll be interesting to see just how uh, how uh, that was scored. Official announcement now from Mike Goodall. Ladies and gentlemen, the referee scores the contest. Mickey Duncan, 77 points. Gary Logan, 80 points. The winner, Gary Logan. Six rounds to Logan, none to Duncan. Two shared is how the referee saw that. And Gary Logan is back with a win.